Greetings, folks, and welcome to a slightly belated launch party for my novella, Antisocial Housing, which is out now from Nordic Press. Now, <clears throat> anybody who watched the recent video diary that I did uh, will know that, yeah, when it came out, I had COVID. <laughs> yeah, I, I was really like, yeah, just not, not good. And uh, yeah, so I, I decided to wait to do it until I got the... Uh, the books in my hand so I could like show them off a little bit. Now that was great in theory, but um <laughs> sorry, I just got distracted by David Green. <laughs> oh, I'm officially Tom Jones. I've got people throwing their underwear at me. Anyway, yeah, so um I was gonna do it when the books arrived and uh, there was a bit of a snafu with the with the order. Uh there was some issue with the postcode or I, I, I don't know but but they have finally turned up today now look at this nice big chunky great box so what i'm gonna do is gonna whip my mini sword out and that sounds filthy uh you know this is one of those things i never knew i needed until i got bought one it's a letter owner that looks like a sword uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is brilliant. Anyway, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to whip, whip my sword out and uh, <clears throat> get into this box and have a look because I've yet to actually see one of these. So I hope that they're uh, I hope they're not terrible <laughs> because it's always a worry when you do an unboxing that you're going to pull something out and you're disappointed with it. Again, that sounded filthy. Just ignore me. Um, right. The usual Amazon overkill with packaging. Ridiculous. It's like, what am I going to do with it? Right. X. Ooh. Oh, it smells great. Ooh, look at that. There we go. Look at that cover. That's a superb cover. and kind of sums the book up really nicely. Um, yeah. Ooh, that's, I like that. That's, uh, that's a good looking little book, is that? Right, let's get this out of the way. Yes, there we go. So, yeah, you can get your hands on these now. Uh, there is a link in the comments, I just put it in. Um, yeah, it's available on Amazon in ebook as well. So, yeah, let's uh, let's open this up. Yes, yeah, so this is part of Nordic Press's new Mythos imprint, which you gotta love that little uh, you gotta love that logo, haven't you? You know, you know what me, I'm a sucker for a tentacle. So, uh, sucker for a tentacle. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm pleased with that. That looks great. Yeah, the, um, the Mythos imprint, it, it aims to put out contemporary Lovecraftian fiction. Um, I've got something coming out with through that imprint in August, but it's not been announced yet. So keep your eyes open for that. Uh, I'm also working on uh, behind the scenes. I've got three things that are all linked in the works with some great authors uh so yeah that's that's all the stuff that's going to be coming down the line uh i spoke to mr hultman earlier who's uh the head of the mythos imprint and uh he said that he is look he is actually looking at the moment for lovecraftian manuscripts novellas that kind of thing so if you, you see anybody sitting on anything tentacular out there get get it over to mr hultman you you know so yeah I'm pleased with that. Oh, oh! I didn't realise there's actually pictures. Look at that. That's really cool. I'm pleased with that. Yeah, I honestly didn't actually realise there was pictures in that. That's great. Oh, yeah. That's come out really well. Excellent. Yeah, so you can get hold of these little beauties now. Uh, I will be offering some signed copies as well, because obviously I've just got a bunch of them. So I will be selling signed copies. So if you fancy a signed copy, get in touch. Um, if you want to be in with a shout of winning a signed copy, just the one. Um, if you want to be in with winning a copy, just comment. That's all you have to do. Just say hello, wave a tentacle, you know, something like that. That's all you need to do, and you could win one of these. Uh, I'll sort that. I'll sort the draw out at a later date. Righty ho. So, if you have any questions uh, for the end of the show, get them in the comments now. I'm going to give you a bit of a reading. Now, I already did a reading of 
the intro at EasterCon, and that's been doing the rounds on YouTube because I put that out as sort of like a stopgap launch thing. Um, so I'm going to read you a little bit from a little bit further on. <clears throat> if my uh, reader behaves itself. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so what's happened so far is that the uh, a police officer, Mr. PC Fisher, uh, police Sergeant Fisher and and uh, Police Constable Granger have gone to Burridge Court, which is a low-rise block of flats in an estate in Cornwall. It's a bit of a run-down place. Uh, it was on the site of an older building, and, and that got torn down because it was one of them 60s concrete monstrosities that was, like, completely unsafe and all the rest of it. So that got torn down uh, and the new building placed upon it. Uh, at the same time, a plumber called Paul Cannon has been called to uh, one of the flats uh, the day before, and he's gone there and he's getting no reply. Now, um, Fisher and Granger have been called out by a, basically a, a complainer. She's one of the, one of those nosy neighbours who's in everybody's business and, uh, and has basically had this issue with the guy whose flat has got the black plumbing. And... Uh, yeah, because apparently he was effing and jeffing and swearing and all the rest of it, and she was she thought it was her, her and you know it's one of one of those sort of nuisance complaints that the police get. So they've gone there, and and all this has kind of gone on. Now, after this, they discovered that the flat is empty, and there's a foul aroma and all the rest of it, and the guy who had the block plumbing has disappeared. Uh, there's been a few uh, grisly deaths by this point. Um, now, so what we do, what we're doing now is we're cutting to another set of characters who are in another flat down the corridor, and uh, there are a couple of stoners. So here we go. Barry exhaled the pungent smoke and passed the uncommonly fat spliff to his friend Kyle. His eyes rolled up into his skull as the powerful THC worked its magic on his frazzled brain. Hey, Barry. <sighs> Did you hear that, dude? Hear what? All that screaming and crashing around. Barry thought for a few seconds longer than he should have taken to formulate a response. Oh, a minute ago, you mean? Yeah, it sounded like World War Three. <clears throat> Kyle coughed and reached for his bottle of energy drink. The one drawback to this current mind-bending strain of hybrid weed was that it left you with a mouth like the Sahara Desert. That and the smell. It smelled like somebody had set fire to a cabbage that 13 cats had urinated on. Oh, I think it was the two dudes in 24 having another domestic. Barry graciously took the joint from his friend and had a good toke. <sighs> Kyle nodded. His friend's theory was not only plausible, but also had a solid grounding in fact. Chris and Richie had enjoyed a somewhat stormy relationship. It wasn't uncommon to hear raised voices coming from their unit. They were both really nice guys, but they didn't half bicker. Who is it? Kyle answered the banging on the door without thinking. Shut up, man. It might be debt collectors. Eh? Kyle glared at his flatmate. You did pay the TV license, right? Didn't you? Um, Barry looked sheepish. Thump, thump, thump. For fuck's sake, Barry. You could go to prison for not paying that. Thump, thump, thump. This time the knocking was accompanied by the irritated voice of Police Sergeant Fisher. Open up. I know you're in there. I heard you whispering. It's the police. Open up. Oh, shit. It's the filth. What do we do? Barry asked, his face turning deathly pale. Oh, you stash the weed. I'll open the door. Kyle stood up. Wait, wait, wait. He'll smell it. So what? You can have a bit for personal use, but an ounce ain't classified as personal. I'm not going to jail for possession with intent. Stash it in the cistern and let me deal with it. Barry hauled himself off the pizza-stained sofa and scooped up the big bag of stinky weed and slipped it into the bathroom, then locked the door behind him. Kyle gave him a few minutes, then stood up. 
Kyle blew the air away from the door and wafted his hands around in the air like that was going to make a damn bit of difference. He took a deep breath and opened it. Hello? Fisher's face was as red as a beetroot. You need to come with us. What? You, you can't. It's, it's just a bit of puff. Fisher grabbed him by the shoulder and yanked him into the corridor. I'm not here about your bloody weed. Where's Chong? What? Who? Kyle scratched his head. You're Cheech. He's Chong. And we need to get the hell out of the building. Kyle chuckled like a buffoon. <laughs> Cheech and Chong. I get it now. We don't have time for this shit, Kyle. Is Barry in or not? Fisher was rapidly losing patience. Um, uh, yeah. He just went to the bathroom. Oh, no. Fisher barged past him and hammered on the bathroom door. He got no answer. Barry, come out of here now. I don't care about the stash you aren't hiding in the cistern. Just get out here now. Again, there was no reply. Fisher reared back on his left leg and booted the door open. There was water, blood and marijuana everywhere. Barry's feet were sticking out of the back of the toilet. Fisher had seen enough. He turned and raced out of the flat. Well, what's going on? Kyle whined. Where's Barry? Granger and Fisher shared glances. Fisher shook his head. Fill him in, will you, constable? Granger nodded, pulled Kyle aside. Then Fisher joined Paul at the next door. Nobody home? He asked, hoping. Dunno. I thought I heard somebody moving around a moment ago. Here, let me try. He hammered on the door with his fist. Open up, police! He put his ear to the door and listened. All he could hear was the gurgling from the pipes in Kyle's flat. It was getting louder with each passing moment. I don't think anybody's at home, smiled at Paul. Come on, let's get out to the next floor. Tickly! With an almighty crash, the huge ball of hungry hate smashed through the door and wall of Kyle's flat. It slammed into the wall opposite, just metres from Kyle and Granger, making the building shake. It rippled, spread, then reformed into an iridescent sphere. Hundreds of baleful orange eyes snapped open and glared at the four people in front of it. Take it And if you want to find out what happens next, you'll have to get hold of a copy. <sighs> yes, so that's uh, a sample of antisocial housing. It's another one of my stories set around my battle in Bettles Cove, uh, in my milieu in Cornwall. It features some um, uh, one of my main character, my one of my main characters from my novella Miracle Growth. Uh, Detective Sergeant Finch has a cameo in it. Uh, he's all he's also in my other novella, um, The Grime of the Ancient Mariner. Uh, he's probably my most recurring character, aside from maybe bungling adventurer Eugene Angove uh, and the villainous Arthur Edwards. But um, yeah. And I, you could probably guess from the weird noise that I made, uh, all you love craft aficionados out there could probably have taken, you'll probably know what the hell that was. And yeah, kind of does what it says on the tin. Antisocial housing. Yeah, it's out now from Nordic Press. So go and get yourself a copy. Uh, right. I'll just check the comments before we wrap this up. If you have any questions, get them in now. Okie dokie. Ah, don't yeah, yeah, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, very good. Um, hay fever's kicking my ass, but apart from that, I'm good. I've had a couple of beers, so I'm quite happy. <laughs> <laughs> Only from you, you filthy devil. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, tentacle waving hello. Yeah, well, hang on. Yeah, there you go. He's waved back, and so was he. <laughs> oh yeah i always forget when i do these things that it like because um josiah's out in california it is sort of like midday in it or something or maybe one o'clock i can't remember exactly i think it might be one in the afternoon or something <laughs> yeah and <laughs> all the way from australia yeah neen cohen morning it's stupid o'clock here at us <laughs> thanks neen thanks for tuning in uh, yes, uh, I mentioned my other novella, Miracle Growth, earlier, which is out now from uh, Erie River. Um, Neen Cohen and another 
author Chris Banner did a superb buddy read thing on it. Uh, they both read it and then they discussed it on YouTube. It's on Mean's YouTube channel. Uh, there's she does quite a lot of really good book reviews and things like that. So go and check it out. Go and check out her channel. There's some great stuff on there. Right. Oh yeah. There's a question from Dawn. Uh, oh, I'm all right. I'm just uh, dosed up to the eyeballs and antihistamines. It's the standard summer for me. <laughs> so summer, uh, like as soon as summer turns up, as soon as like you know the season appears, I start sneezing. And turn bright red. <laughs> like heat and pollen just beat my ass. Yeah, uh, but she asked a question: Are you a plotter or a pantser? I'm a complete and total pantser. Um, complete and total pantser. Um, when I first started writing, I did actually try doing the whole plotter thing, and I spent ages asking about with post-it notes, and I had them stuck on my lap, like all over my laptop and all over the desk, and all this kind of shite. And I didn't actually get anything written. And in the end, I just threw it all in the bin and started writing, and it just and that kind of worked for me well it's interesting is this story because quite like several of my longer works this was originally supposed to be a 3,000 word short story and uh 25,000 words into it I realized I got over a bit you know <laughs> uh which is a common thing it, it's like Mr Green um likes to say that uh, I would start writing a drabble and end up with a novella because it's kind of true. Uh, right. Yeah. So thank you all for tuning in. Like I say, you can get hold of a copy now. Uh, there's the link. There is a link underneath. If you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be underneath the video as well. Uh, this is out now from, oh no, that's not, <laughs> I'm such an idiot. That's, that's Nordic Press. I was just about to say, and that's out from Nordic Press. So that's how you can find nordic press uh and here you go that's the actual link anyway <laughs> yes so thank you all for tuning in on uh, a monday of all things and uh i'm really pleased with that that's a nice looking little book is that I'm really quite pleased that that's come out yeah uh done a good job of that they've done a damn fine job of that and i do like the pictures i'm a sucker for an illustration especially when it's like tentacles you know, more illustrations of tentacles. That's what the world needs. Okay, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, I will speak to you all very short soon, I imagine. Uh, yeah, and thanks again, and good night.